Lowndes and Scape once again on the front row after two Quinellas today. Ingle and Garth Tander on row two. Larkham and Radisich row three. Barks, a great recovery, will start on row four alongside Glenn Seaton. Yeah, Glenn Seaton's oil leak was just, uh, they were able to fix that fairly effectively. Didn't have to change the engines at the first thought. Right down to Stephen Johnson, Perkins. Bradley Jones up to 16th after qualifying 20th. For the back in the grid, Neil Crompton, they have completed an engine change on that car. It had been suffering a misfire. Trevor Ashby, Karen McConville, Brett Peters, Dougal McDougal, Steve Reed, Paul Romano and Paul Morris. Peter Gazzard making his Shell Series debut this weekend. Anthony Tratt alongside Rodney Forbes and Stephen Ellery. Cameron McLean, the Queenslander and Thomas Mazira. John Faulkner still having electrical problems with that car. They've changed every electrical component in it. Hopefully they've licked that misfire for race three. Craig Bedell also has had a complete Clutch change for that car. Here are the points after two races. Lowndes eight clear of teammate Scaife. Ingle third, Larkham fourth, Radisic and Tanda. Now the interesting thing is whoever finishes third out of Larkham and Ingle will be the man who finishes third on the podium today. So we'll watch with keen interest in this race as Larkham, who you see on screen there now, with the Mitre 10 in-car, looks for his first ever Shell Championship Series podium. podium rather. Hodum. <laughs> yes. Thanks be a, for that. Be a big day for the Queenslander, wouldn't it? It would be. A lot of the Ford teams test here. A lot disappointed not to be further up the grid. Here we go. Start of race three. Listen to these awesome V8s. This is Queensland Raceway, the third and final race in round seven of the championship. It's been a HRT domination again today. Lounge gets the, uh, the power down and rockets away. Scape comes with him. A run to turn one, but Lowndes has got it. Scape tucks in behind. Look at Tanda. Oh, look. Tanda's come all the way around Russell Ingle. That's going to be a long way around Russell <laughs> there, I would say. Now we through turn two. Titan corner onto the back straight once again. Craig Lowndes doing what he's done all day. Leading off the start, sprinting away. Look at Mark Scape though. He's got his hands and his mirrors full. Russell Ingle and Garth Tanda try to run down the oh, inside. Tanda down the outside. He's going right around the outside of Mark Scape. He'll get hung out to dry here. <laughs> Ingle under brakes. Oh, now we've had one go wide. I think that's Stephen Richards has gone off there. So Richards recovers and gets back on the circuit. But Ingle is mixing it big time. And not afraid to argue. Copped a $10,000 fine and lost 20 championship points following that uh, altercation with Mike Imry in race one. Emory, and Russell fighting now in uh, the third of the day. Imry also copped a suspended $1,000 fine, and which has been suspended for three races. He was declared an obstructionist yeah. by the CAMS officials. <laughs> so he got his knuckles wrapped as well. But Russell will be much lighter in the pocket after today. Ten grand. But the enforcer really living up to his reputation at Queensland this afternoon. Right in the thick of this battle. Lowndes has cleared out of there two seconds faster than his teammate Mark Scape. Lowndes on the opening lap, a 116.81, and Scape a 118.07. So we're talking one and a half seconds, in fact, there. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's the Lowndes of old, isn't it? Get out there on cold tyres. Absolute blistering speed on that opening lap. That's where he builds up that cushion. And once he's got it, he can maintain it all the way to the end. But here's where the real battle is. Mark Scape defending hard in the Holden Racing Team Commodore from Russell Engel. Is really pumped up for a big result here. Garth Tander in behind him. Then it's Paul Radisic, Mark Larkham, Glenn Seaton, Jason Bargwana. There's the battle between Paul Wheel and Tony Longhurst for 12. Oh, Russell's got to be careful. It could turn out a really expensive day. <laughs> Very expensive day. Right in behind Mark Scape, our championship leader. 33-year-old New South Welshman. 764 points. He's in a very enviable position now because even though he wants to run up in that top four, top five cars, winning is not so critical. As long as he keeps those points ticking over, big run by Longhurst down the inside under brakes into turn six. Bargwana and Greg Murphy going at it, hammer and top here. Murphy in the Kmart Commodore. Let's take a look at the Shell Helix replay. Now that is Alan Heath and John Cotter. Oh, oh, oh Thomas Mazira running off the circuit and Rodney Forbes again in amongst it. And McLean has had a spin as well. She's Rodney Forbes. Really been in the thick of things this afternoon. The Sydney side, look at Ingle though. He'd have the eyes on. Locked in behind the old racing team. Commodore flat out in the back straight. Building up to 240 kilometers an hour. We'll hit the braking zone. Look at the bump there. 100, meter, 100 meters out. Scaife defending hard. Ingle bumper leaning on the back of the Red Baron as they come up through the center section down toward turn four. This should be a really good tussle, actually, because Scafie's got the widest Commodore in the world, but he wants it, hasn't he? And, uh... Well, 
Todd has been very concerned about tyre wear this weekend. So his mechanic, Robbie Starr, has made some minor adjustments to the rear suspension of the car to make sure he can get this one home on rubber. And Engel, though, attacking really hard. Garth Tander wants his slice of the action too. Tremendous battle for second position. First of the Fords. Oh, and there's Rasic. Rasic. Now, he's he had, was running in fit mark. Yeah, I was going to say, he's had quite a consistent day, but it looks like he's peeling off into pit lane. Now they're talking there, can't persist with it, was the question from the team. So some sort of problem, maybe. Some sort of mechanical drama, you can see us. No, it's all over, he's yeah. saying. He just said it's all over. See a star in the front windscreen, look mm. at that. Some sort of damage, a rock or something being thrown up. But he has switched it off. Paul Radisic is out of action. Yeah, rotten luck for the Kiwis, and particularly our Kiwi fans who are watching through TV1 in New Zealand. And look at that, fastest lap so far. Craig Lowndes, a 1.11. 1-5 he's gone even faster than he has in the previous two races so the track was supposed to be hard on tyres Lowndes is going even faster at the end of the day extraordinary here's Craig Baird didn't get a start in race two he's coming right from the back of the grid he's got a lot of work to do he's so smooth Lowndes and that's why at the end of the day he's got the best set of rubber isn't he because he looks after it. a lot of the teams have been complaining after the first and second races here today that they are struggling with brake problems particularly at this part of the circuit this middle section where there's a, a lot of hard braking to be done. The, the only reprieve the brakes get is along the front straight here and through the sweeping turns one and two. From there, there's a lot of heavy brake applications and teams have been playing with compounds and all sorts of things to try and get around these problems. Look at Tony Longhurst here, throwing out a challenge to Stephen Johnson. That's in the foreground. You ride with John Bow. The be clear and simple on board on the roof of the Caterpillar Ford. And up in front of him, two other Fords battling away. Longhurst, the Queenslander, and young Stephen Johnson. Lowndes continues to pump it out. 3.1 seconds, the gap over Mark Skate, his teammate in second. Russell Engel in third, Garth Tander still in fourth. And Larkham. Oh, look at this. Oh, Biffo. Stephen Johnson on the receiving end of that. Elbows out for Tony Longhurst. Great run down the inside. He's currently sixth in the Shell Championship point standings. Stephen Johnson, though, isn't going to have any of that. Ranges alongside on the approach to turn four. Plenty of Biff and Barge. John Bow joins in on the action. So three forwards and a real battle here to stay in the top ten. Tony Longhurst currently in tenth spot. Apparently Radisic lost uh, third gear. That's why he couldn't carry on. Longhurst team were incredibly impressed with his performance in the second race. In the space of 10 laps, he jumped 11 positions. So the Queensland are really driving quite well. Here is Tasmania's John Bow. Aboard the Caterpillar Ford, he has really closed in on Stephen Johnson in the Shell Helix Racing Ford as they sweep through turn one, lap six of 17. Has not been the season that John Bow would have liked. Tasmania, not off to a good start, has been involved in a number of incidents this year. Fighting hard here in Queensland. This is a bit further up. Mark Larkin in fifth position. Keep in mind he has to beat Ingle into third spot. So hopefully he will end up on the podium this afternoon. It'll be a big day for Mark Larkin. He's never been on the Shell Series podium. Let's have a look at his feet. That's always a really interesting shot. It is. You see flat out, and then you watch. Get some of the brakes. That's amazing. That it's an actual flat change here. They come off. No, no clutch use, Baz, yeah. for the actual change. Be clear and simple on board telemetry. So we've got it all covered here. Full throttle. And look at the way he just lifts that throttle just for a fraction of a second to pick the next gear. No clutch required in a V8 supercar. You just bang this gearbox through. Hard on the brakes down toward turn one. Just feathering the throttle, full throttle as he approaches turn two. Look at the road speed down on the left-hand side of your screen. 140 kilometres an hour as he blasts out of here. Heads down the back straight, up to fifth gear. Gets into sixth gear. And look at that road speed, almost 250 kilometres an hour on the approach to this very tight hairpin. And Mark Larkin giving it everything in the Mitre 10 forward to try and close the gap to that Commodore pack up ahead of him. Larkin really has been quite a, a good qualifying specialist. 
awesome performance at Mount Panorama Bathurst last year, that 2.09 lap time. We saw him at Queensland as well in the qualifying session on the Friday, in Canberra rather, on the qualifying session on the Friday. Did exceptionally well there and overnight had provisional pole was picked from the post during the uh, top 15 shootout. But this is a track he knows very well. Now the problem he's facing is to try and chase down Garth Tander at this man, Russell Lingle, in a bid to gain his first podium position in the Shell Championship. Smoke coming from the front right of Lingle's car, and it looks like the tyre's shining. So I don't know whether it's oil or something, just to see if we get a look at it. Front right-hand uh, tyre. Craig Lowndes, meanwhile, maintaining that gap over Mark Scape. 3.3 seconds at the moment. Lap times fairly consistent. Scaife's just gone about four tenths of a second quicker that lap. But Lowndes continues to hold this race by the throat. Russell Engel some one second down the road from Scaife. This battle for third between himself and Garth Tander. Mark Larkin, we were just watching in fifth. And it's Seaton, Bargwana, Murphy, Longhurst, and Stephen Johnson rounding out the top ten at the moment. Positions remaining fairly static. So Greg Murphy doing quite well when you consider that he's gotten around. Tony Longhurst and moved up to uh, eighth position in the Kmart Commodore. Neil Crompton behind Paul Wheel. Crompton had to have an engine change between races two and three. Finds himself back in 14th position at the moment. But he was an outstanding performer on the streets of Canberra. Took his second career podium in the nation's capital. But mechanical luck not riding with Crompton today. Crompton will be 40 in August, and as you mentioned there, Mark, hasn't been a great weekend for him. They were suffering some overheating during the course of the second race and developed a misfire as well. So the team quite wisely changed the engine. We said at the top of this race that Russell, if he stayed where he was in third place, would in fact end up on the podium for today. But there was some concern, I guess, about whether that 20-point penalty would come into effect straight away. It has, in fact, already been imposed. Russell has lost the 20 points. So at this rate, Mark Larkham, who is in fifth position, should end up with his first ever Shell Series podium. But that's also dependent on whether Garth Tander passes Ingle. Because if Tander gets in front of Ingle for third, that'll give him equal points with Larkham. Geez, you're good with the calculator. <laughs> yeah, fantastic, aren't I? I'll take my abacus with me everywhere. <laughs> Uh, but they'll be equal on 94 points, but because uh, Lark, because Tander was higher placed in the final race, that'll put him on the podium. So, a bit of a nail-biting finish here. See if Mark Larkham can get his first Shell Series pole podium appearance. It's been a long time between drinks. Difficult career in VA Supercars. Larkham currently 12th in the championship. 56 rounds he's competed in and yet to stand on that podium. So it'll be a big day for the Mitre 10 team if he can pull that off. So some good stories to emerge from the Queensland round of the championship when you consider that if Tanda manages to get on the podium as well, that's a tremendous fight back given the sorts of problems the Gary Rogers Motorsport team have suffered here this weekend. You ride with Albury's Brad Jones in the Aussie Mail Ford. There's Craig Baird making a good fight back as well from the back of the grid. Baird suffering clutch problems, now up to 19th, and he's beating the walls too by the looks of things. Bit of a concertina, and right in the middle of it. This is the battle of the back of the top 20. Craig Baird in 18th, Brad Jones in 19th. So... He's had a terrible weekend, Craig Baird. It really started, started pretty well, didn't yeah. it? His qualifying speed was good. Um, that's definitely short of the wheelbase of that thing. <laughs> Couple of points of interest for you too. A lot of teams in the coming weeks will finalise their driver lineups for the endurance events. We hear that uh, one person very much on the cards with Stone Brothers Racing is young David Bernard, tested very well in the car he will campaign in the upcoming V8 Lights rounds and has also driven Tony Longhurst's Caltex Haviland Ford. So watch for David Bernard as Stephen Richards dives down the inside of Queensland. Paul Morrison moves up a place, so Richards going to position 16, courtesy of that. But Bernard, who has been touted as such a, an up-and-coming star, Mark, good to see him uh, in V8 Supercar Racing, hopefully with Stone Brothers, and it certainly looks like it, for the Queensland 500 and Bathurst. Yeah, it would be great. Former Australian Formula 4 champion. And very competitive in the American Formula 4 2000 scene. He's a guy with uh, great talent. It's great to see Stone Brothers bringing on another young Australian hero in V8 supercars. I'm looking forward to seeing him in action in the Conica V8 Lights race at Lakeside in August. Jason Barguana now in seventh position, just holding out Tony Longhurst in the second of the Valvoline Cummins Commodores. This team 
found something in the morning warm-up here today that suddenly made these cars work. They had a great setup from last season that they thought would be just fantastic heading into round seven. But of course, a lot of things have changed. The nature of this circuit and of course, the introduction of a new Bridgestone control tire. Oh! Bywana has gone unloaded by Tony Longhurst. <laughs> how, was, how hard was that? Yeah, exactly. Well, mate. Maybe a bit of a payback there. Wasn't there? Oh, wasn't no. <laughs> there was an incident in race two, Baz. <laughs> yeah, you got a good memory. Yeah, I know. I just was thinking. But Tony Longhurst sticks the nose of the Caltex Havoline Ford upside the Valvoline machine. Sticks gives it. him a big serve. So Longhurst really charging, very aggressive this afternoon. And his home test track. So Longhurst moves up to seventh position. But we're hearing from the pits that his steering wheel's gone all askew Have as a, a result this, of this then. collision. Look at this. Oh, 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 dear me, that was just slider in nice and gently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gave that a good whack, and he reckons his steering wheel's at 45 degrees now, so that's obviously oh, under the pressure now. From Greg yeah. Murphy down the inside. Murphy seizes the opportunity. Oh, and he's uh, running oh. a bit wide, deep under brakes. <laughs> Stephen Johnson coming for the right as well. So, a great battle going on here. Johnson has moved up a place. Longhurst has gone back too. And Murphy is the mover. Best of the Kiwis, eighth position at the moment. Now, don't forget, of course, for those of you watching any V8 supercar information you want, race results, championship points, you name it, the official V8 supercar website, v8supercar.com.au. It's all there for you. And, of course, the 10 website, 10.com.au. You can check out the RPM link there and get all our program information and much, much more, 10.com.au. Two laps remain. Three, in fact, we're able... Three laps remaining for our race leader, Craig Lowndes. 2.9 seconds, the gap over Mark Scaife. Russell Engel, some two and a half seconds behind the number two HRT Commodore. Those top three positions have remained static. Tander still in fourth, Mark Larkham in fifth. But there's some fabulous battles going on back further in the pack. And this is one of them. John Bauer earning it on the back of Tony Longhurst. That's the battle for ninth. Let's look at the replay, Baz. Yeah, good move from him. For sure, Longhurst got really struck him with the steering because uh, John Bauer's catching up really quickly now. Murph seemed to struggle there mid corner too, didn't he? It sort of understeered, mm. but he managed to hang on to it. Here's our race leader. Continuing the Holden domination of the Shell Championship Series. They've taken all seven pole positions. They've taken all six round wins this year and very much looking like they're going to take number seven. So a total clean sweep for Holden so far in season 2000. There's been a lot of talk about the uh, reverse grid format we saw for the first time at Canberra. A lot of people up and down pit lane talking about maybe that's a good thing to introduce to the Shell series. Yeah, bring it on, I think, is the general comment, isn't it? I mean, it really did create some fantastic action in Canberra. The downside, I guess, to what you're talking about, Mark, is introducing something like that mid-season can be can be a little tough when someone's leading the championship, but I'm a big fan. I think it was terrific down there on the streets of Canberra, and if it could work there, it certainly could work anywhere. OK, I totally agree with that. I mean, I think all the... Uh Paul Wheel goes around. Be a good run today. I've been 13th position. But I think all this talk about the performance review committee and chopping under trays and all this, this whole parity debate is just so emotional. Do you notice the camera when we had reverse good racing, no one talked about parity? It was no longer an issue. But I mean, the, the point you're making is it is a concern, though. I mean, we've, we've now had, at the end of this race, if Craig Lowndes wins it, HRT will have won 14 of this season's 20 races. Unbelievable. Paul Wheel, who's looking for a consistent run this weekend, has been caught up in a lot of dramas. Final lap, less than three kilometres remaining for our race leader. And this has been a repeat performance, what we saw in Barbagello. Pole position, three race wins for Craig Lance. You can't do better than that. Rodney Forbes' car in the walls there, the exhaust pipe's almost touching the ground. They're on their final lap, Craig Lowndes heading for home as his battle further back in the pack continues between Stephen Ellery in the Super Chief Autos 4 and Rodney yeah. Forbes sporting several battle scars. Look at those exhaust pipes <laughs> dragging on the ground in the wind's Commodore. Yeah, big damage, look at me. Oh, look at the side. <laughs> A couple of panel beaters rubbing their hands together, <laughs> waiting for that one. There's yeah. our man, middle of the track. For the final time, Craig Lowndes, 25-year-old defending Shell Series champion, 
was lying in fourth place heading into this round. Yeah. And this will do his championship bid no end of good. Sure will. Important chance to close the gap. Has had some mechanical unreliability this year, which has cost him big time in important races. But he this will be very important. He brings it on to the front straight for the final time. Checkered flag being waved for Craig Lowndes. He takes victory. Oh, fantastic drive. Indeed, it was a fantastic drive. Three from three and a Holden Racing trifecta. Scape gets home second, Ingle third, Tanda fourth, and Larkham rounds out the five. They are just so very, very good, HRC. I mean, you can't take it away from them. There's no doubt, you know, you can sort of stick lead in the car, penalise them or whatever, but they came here, sorted the cars out, hadn't Ted been here since the last race, and uh, every, every time they went out, they improved their time, they got better and better and better, and they're just very, very good. That's all, you know, there's no excuse for yeah, it. Yeah, class act, you're quite right. Just excellent. Now, word we're getting through from our statistician, Nigel Greenway, is that Mark Larkham, who finished fifth in that final race, has earned himself his first ever oh, Shell good. Championship Series podium. So great to see the Queenslander on the podium at the end of the day. That's a sensational result. There he is in the minor turn forward. Good journey. Well done, guys. <laughs> well, I think what he's saying was he's happy. He's delighted with that. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be? <laughs> Terrific performance from Mark Larkham. Well, if the Queensland Ford teams were hoping for a chance to knock off the Holdens on home soil. It didn't work out this afternoon. Holden Racing Team once again dominant. In fact, in the last 30 races, Holden have won 28 of them. Quite incredible. But it's not all bad news for the Blue Oval fans this afternoon. Mark Larkham is taking his first podium position in the Shell Championship Series. Put your hands together for Mark Larkham. Like you said to me, uh, you've taken the long way to getting up these steps, haven't you? It's been a long, hard haul. Mate, I'm going to get back down there and climb back up here a couple of times. Look, uh, I'd just like to say thanks to that bunch of guys down there dressed in blue, gave me a great vehicle, and uh, probably more importantly, um, fantastic to see the Ford fans out here today and uh, hopefully give them a little bit to cheer for. Hope so. Hope to see you in action. In the next round at Winton, Mark Larkham, outstanding performance in the Mitre 10 Ford. In second place today, our championship leader. Boy, I tell you what, he's keeping that points table ticking over. Put your hands together for Mark Scaife. That looked like a very clever drive to me today. You just kept those points ticking over, slowly tuned the car up, and you brought it home again. Now, look, it was a great day for the championship. Obviously, we weren't really fast enough, and we know uh, sort of why. And uh, the car was really good in the last race, especially. I got caught with Engel and Tanner at the start. It was a bit of a battle. I didn't need to get escorted off the road, so I had to be a bit clever about it. And it was, uh, as I said, a good, a good result for our team. Were you surprised the, the Fords weren't actually at the point in, like taking pole positions and wins here this weekend? I honestly thought they'd be really hard to beat here. I mean, Larko's obviously been, been speedy, but uh, there's a couple of others that probably speed-wise were good enough, uh, didn't really get a good enough run. Put your hands together, folks. Mark Scaife, second place, and continuing to build in this championship battle. Right now, I'd like to call on communications manager for the Shell Oil Company, Charlotte Gould, to make the presentation to our overall winner. Pole position and three race wins. You can't do better than that. Craig Lowndes. Go Holden is the L. Boy, oh boy, didn't you go today? What an outstanding performance. That's really put you back in the championship battle. That was an incredible drive. Well, the guys have done a fantastic job. Uh, Mobile, Holden and Bridgestone really give us a, a great package. Uh, this was a track last year. We probably didn't perform as well as we'd like to, and really uh, the guys have done a lot of effort, a lot of testing at Winton, and it's really worked out well this weekend. Now, of course, the next round we go to Winton, where you've had so much success in testing, so can we expect this domination to continue? Well, we hope so. Uh, now, the competition today is so tough. Uh, you know, Mark Larkham said earlier in the week that maybe they'll, they'll suit the Winton circuit, so uh, you never know. But, uh, Shiguri, I've looked after the car. I hope Mrs Shiggy's uh, going well, and uh, we'll be back tonight. Put your hands together, folks. Craig Lowndes and a brand-new Holden Racing Team Commodore taking it home to victory at Queensland Raceway.